Have you been told that your A1C level is high and you aren't sure what that means? Then stay tuned because I'm sharing everything you need to know about A1C and what it means for blood sugar management and type 2 diabetes. Hey everyone, I'm Erin here with Healthy Mom Happy Family and I am so excited to be here today addressing a question I get asked all of the time. What is A1C and why does it matter? Now, before we dive in, I just want to remind you that if you're looking for tips and tricks on managing blood sugar and type 2 diabetes, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video. Okay, so let's jump in and talk about everything you need to know about A1C and diabetes. All right, so if you're wondering what A1C is, well, hemoglobin A1C is a blood test that measures your average blood sugar levels over the past two to three months. So if you're at risk of diabetes or you have prediabetes, your doctor may do this test about once a year. Now, if you already have been diagnosed with type one or type two diabetes, you're probably gonna see this test ordered more often, every three to six months, depending on how well controlled your blood sugar is. Now, A1C is a diagnostics test. That means it's used to diagnose prediabetes and diabetes, and it's also gonna be used in combination with other tests, like fasting blood sugar, glucose tolerance test, or even a random blood sugar test to really help to diagnose if you have diabetes. But A1C is also used to really check your management of blood sugar if you have been diagnosed with type two diabetes. So let's look a little bit more about how it works and how it's calculated. Okay, so I wanna share with you what A1C is and why it actually matters. So basically, after you eat carbohydrates, they're broken down into sugars and those enter your bloodstream. Now, this sugar attaches to hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein that's found in red blood cells. Now, the higher your blood sugar is, the more that sugar will attach to the hemoglobin on the red blood cells. So this is where the A1C test comes in because the A1C test checks the percentage of hemoglobin that's coated in sugar. Now, since red blood cells die off and regenerate every two to three months, if we look at how much sugar is stuck to the hemoglobin, it gives us an idea of how your blood sugar has been running over the past two to three months. And that's why this test can be repeated as much as every three months. All right, so let's look at what the A1C results really mean. So if your doctor tells you that your A1C level was high, I don't want you to panic because this is what it actually means. When you test your hemoglobin A1C levels, this can give your doctor and your care team really important information to help them understand how well you're managing your blood sugar and if your treatment plan needs to be adjusted. And the reason that they're doing this is because the goal is to avoid complications of uncontrolled high blood sugar levels. So this A1C provides really useful information, not only in diagnosing diabetes, but also helping you to manage it. Because let's think about it, if someone has high or low blood sugars, their A1C could be normal and their diabetes could still be uncontrolled. Okay, that's because the A1C is basically an average of what's going on in the last two to three months. So as a standalone measurement, it's not the only thing we want to look at. It's still important to know what your fasting blood sugar ops are, what your pre and post meal blood sugars are. That's going to give us a bigger picture. You can have a high A1C, but only check your blood sugar first thing in the morning. And if it always looks good first thing in the morning, you might think you're doing a great job. But the A1C lets us know that somewhere else during the day, blood sugar is higher. So that's why the A1C in combination with fasting blood sugar and frequent testing throughout the day gives us the best picture on what our blood sugar is doing throughout the entire 24 hour period of the day. Okay, so if you are looking at your A1C results and wondering what they mean, here is what the numbers really mean. So if we are looking at A1C as far as diagnosing diabetes, a normal range is 5.7% or less. Anywhere from 5.7 to 6.4% would be that pre-diabetes range or that at-risk range. And above 6.5 is typically classified as having diabetes. Some physicians use 7.0, but anywhere between 6.5 to 7.0 is really putting you in that diabetes category. Now, what does that mean in terms of actual blood sugar values? Because you see this percentage, and if you're checking your blood sugar, you're probably seeing your blood sugar as 90 or 100 or 120. So your estimated average glucose level, or your EAR, is really what you want to look at, right? So if we're looking at what is the A1C, we want to see what does that mean in terms of actual blood sugar levels. So if you're seeing that your A1C is 7%, that means that your blood sugar on average is 154 milligrams per deciliter. 
If it's at 8%, your blood sugar is 183 milligrams per deciliter on average. 9%, 212 milligrams per deciliter on average. And a 10 would mean your blood sugar on average is at 240 milligrams per deciliter. So this is why the A1C is helpful because it shows us the average of what our blood sugar is doing all throughout the day. All right, so I wanna share a little bit more about A1C versus fast and glucose levels. Because the big difference is that A1C is telling us the average blood sugar over the past two to three months. So this includes fasting blood sugar, but also blood sugar all throughout the day. Your fasting blood sugar is really just telling you day to day at one moment in time what your blood sugar is doing after an eight to 12 hour fast. So fasting blood sugar is going to change day to day, and this can also alert you if your blood sugar is running high, whereas A1C is a longer term average. But we need both numbers to really understand how well you're managing diabetes over a period of time. So fasting blood sugar gives us insight from day to day, but the A1C is looking at blood sugar all day long, and we're looking at the average over a few months. Now, if your A1C is elevated, there are ways to improve it. And I am sure that this is something you wanna do if you've heard your A1C is elevated. Now, how you're going to improve it is really gonna be dependent on what you and your physician and your team really think is appropriate for you on your diagnosis and your management. So if you have prediabetes and you have an elevated A1C, but it's not yet at the level of type two diabetes, you're going to be recommended to focus on lifestyle changes, natural ways to reverse prediabetes. So exercise, stress management, better sleep, improving your meal plan. If you have diabetes and your A1C is elevated, this might incorporate changes in medication if you're already taking medication, along with improving lifestyle behaviors like diet and exercise and stress management as well as sleep. So if your A1C is elevated, you wanna to talk to your physician, you wanna to talk to your dietitian, you wanna to talk to your whole diabetes care team and really understand what are the best steps for you as an individual to take to improve A1C. Now, you always wanna talk with your physician about what's right for you as an individual, but there are a few ways you can focus on to reduce A1C. So a balanced diet is of course important. We wanna focus on slow digestive carbohydrate at each meal, pairing it with protein, fat, and fiber, small frequent meals throughout the day. You also want to include mild to moderate physical activity every day. So a goal should be about 150 minutes of moderate exercise throughout the week. Now it's not just exercise and diet that matter. Improving stress, so lowering stress levels, because so stress raises blood sugar. We want to get better sleep because the less sleep you get, the less quality sleep, the more insulin resistant you become, which drives your blood sugar higher too. And then if you are on medications, you wanna make sure that you're taking them at the correct time as they're prescribed and adjustments might be needed depending on what your physician and your diabetes care team think is right for you. So here's the bottom line on A1C. This is a lab that can tell you and your doctor what your average blood sugar has been over the past two to three months. It's used as a diagnostic test to help diagnose prediabetes or diabetes, as well as to help assess how well you're managing blood sugar over the last few months. But if your A1C is higher than it should be, there are things you can do to help bring it back into a normal range. The steps you take are really gonna depend on you as an individual and your treatment plan, but adjusting your lifestyle to improve your dietary balance, to get more physical activity, to reduce stress, to get better sleep, all of these things in combination with medication are gonna be suggested to bring those numbers down. And remember, A1C is a long-term lab. It changes over the course of two to three months. So really focusing on those small, simple changes that you can stick with consistently day to day, those are gonna have the biggest impact on bringing A1C down in the next few months. So what questions do you have on A1C? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful and you're looking on for more tips and tricks on managing blood sugar, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a new video. Thanks for joining me. 